Okay, hopefully that worked. It's, it didn't really let me select the right tab, but okay. Um, hopefully we're recording something, at least the audio. Um, okay, so so great. So um, for anyone who's tuning in here, I'm talking with Matt and Phil, and basically um, we're all kind of interested in a similar space here, right? So we we all have worked on some kind of Go framework of some sort, some kind of web framework, and I think we're hitting a sticking point where there's not a lot of great native Go solutions for reactive front ends for for web front ends, right? So um, I found both of your projects, Matt. I found your project a long time ago. You have you have a, a popular project called Bud. Um, which is like a full stack Go framework. And you um, basically were allowing different front ends for your framework in the past, and you're doing some Svelte compiling in V8. And then at some point, I think, you know, you decided maybe you needed a little more native solution. So uh, you started building a project called Duo. Um, and maybe you can tell us a little bit more where that is. And then just so people know, Phil had started, a, you know, a project of his own, and he basically was building kind of like a Svelte compatible um, reactive front end using Go as well, um, focusing mainly on the DOM targets and not the SSR aspect of it. And, you know, in, in discussions with both of you, we thought maybe there's a way to either like share lessons learned or combine these projects into some kind of super project that could actually um, hit all the edge cases of, of, of both these scenarios. So I don't know, Matt, do you want to give a little background on Duo and, and, and Bud and anything else that might be helpful for Phil? Yeah, sure. Um... Well, first of all, it's, it's nice to be here uh, talking to you, to you both. Um, and Phil, I'm like super interested also to hear kind of uh, your motivation for uh, Zooey. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I can start. Um, so uh, Bud was uh, an attempt to basically build like a full stack framework in, in Go, um, similar to like Laravel or uh, Rails, but to do it more like and do a little bit less like of the just scaffold like a thousand files up front and do more a little bit more of like how Next.js works where it's like you uh, kind of you can get started with like two or three files and then it grows in complexity incrementally over time. Um, and to do that in Go, Go is a pretty limited language. So you need to like do a bunch of code gen, things like that. And um, I got pretty far with that. Um, it started getting very, very complex doing the code gen because you need to do code gen for like the controllers and then you do code gen for the, the things that rely on the controllers, like the routing layer and, and the web layer and things like that. And so um, I found like, I haven't set down the project, but I'm like still like trying to think of how ways of simplifying it because it just got a little, like a little bit overly complex. Um, and and uh, it was kind of hard to, it became hard to build on basically. Um, in the meantime, like, implementing like an MVC in, in Go is like, would be awesome, like a, a full stack framework. But the really, the hardest part, like, or the, like the, the most limiting part about Go uh, for me has been like the, like you, the, there's, there's stuff to do controllers, there's stuff to do models in, in Go, so like that's pretty good. Um, but the, the view layer is like <laughs> very, very limited. Um, and so, especially compared to like the state of the art and the JavaScript ecosystems. So, um, I wanted to do something there. Uh, I, I implemented something in Bud uh, that, yeah, as Jim kind of mentioned, was like uh, this V8. Uh, it, it was using Go V8 um, by uh, this other fella from Australia. Um, and uh, it, yeah, it basically, it worked. Like it, you could compile, it was just using the, the Svelte compiler in JavaScript and like compiling in Go. Um, the challenge there was it was using C Go. So like you can't, like people weren't, able to just like uh, do cross com cross uh, environment builds. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it was just a little bit slow or like the, it, yeah, it, it complicated things a little bit in, in various ways. And so I was just exploring in Duo, I was exploring, um, could you offer like a more like, like limited version of SSR plus uh, client side rendering in a reactive way? Um, You'd have to give up some things because you don't have a full like if you don't have a full JavaScript execution execution engine on the server side, um, what 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 can you give up? Like what's okay to give up uh, in this in the Svelte compilation, but like still do the job. And I really like wanted something that was um, like like kind of back in the, like it was like, like harking back to the old days, but with like a little, little bit of a modern twist where it's like. It's, it renders HTML and then it renders JavaScript and that JavaScript hydrates that or like or, or, or like makes that it HTML interactive like kind of like the jQuery days and so I'm like I was thinking just like could we do something like that where like 
you still get one template with like a spell template. It it you're able to like evaluate it into HTML on the server side, and then like it, it also just spits out this client side JavaScript, and it's able to like you're able to just include that on the HTML page, and like then it becomes reactive, something like that. That's what, uh, and so yeah, that's that's the kind of original motivation and, and goal. Um, right now, like it's it's totally just an experiment. Um, I've I've had I've set this down like I've been picking it up, start setting it down a little bit here on and off. Um, I think yeah, like I'm just kind of working on other things at the moment, but like it's one of those things that like I always keep coming back to and like just wanting to like uh, like it would be it would be great to like get this thing out there. Yeah, I mean that's super cool. I so I have a, like a bunch of questions I, I outlined, you know, before this call. Phil, before I you know hop into stuff, did, did you have any questions or anything about what Matt just said? Not really. Kind of makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said last time, we already had a, a call together, right? A video call, and like I said last time, right now I'm not very much in the whole topic. Of web front ends, but I can understand these challenges and uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's kind of so it's kind of interesting that it seems like you guys came at it from almost different angles. Where it seemed Matt, you, you see, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were almost more focused on SSR and getting the HTML produced, and it seems like Phil was more focused on like the getting the Phil is is Zooey producing web components? Is that basically what it's doing on the back end when you compile those? Um, you compile like the the Svelte syntax. Is it creating a web component, or, or how does it work? Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, I mean, you can't do web components without uh, scripting them. The only way to define them um, is to write a script for them, and so that's the kind of script that it's generating. In fact, there's no markup generation as such. It's just generating basically vanilla JS uh, that's doing DOM manipulations and and this. Um, let's just say pops up sort of reactive uh, whatever is defined in in the script um and the md attributes <clears throat> so it generates this as if he would handwrite it except without the mistakes he would make uh handwriting it you know component for component so it's uh pretty uh that's praise basically what i wanted because i didn't want this whole react uh, paradigm with a um, dom diffing which i think vu also uses right this is this seems so um wasteful to me if you can really just sort of like um perfect genius manipulate the dom right in real time without the diffing stuff that we need to so but you would yeah need something like swelty for that uh in spirit or just even in design so yeah that's why I went for that. Mm -hmm. So kind of like getting out of the virtual DOM versus, and then just kind of doing like hmm. manipulations on the specific elements. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I guess uh, maybe I'll just hop into some questions here and then you guys can cut me off if you have, you know, I don't want to occupy the whole conversation, but um, uh, Matt, I had a question for you about, so Duo creating of HTML, right? So we you know we talked a little bit over Twitter and I know you were, you know, you had some worries about like, um, using Goja or, or one of those systems to evaluate JS because there's some concurrency issues there. And, you know, I think you'd mentioned that you'd need some kind of like locking or pooling system and you're worried about performance. Um, so is, is Duo in its current state, is it producing HTML? And if so, like, how are you doing that without something like Goja or are you using Goja in its current uh, permutation? Yeah. Um, sorry, there's like a interesting, like, four jets flying over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're know, sal saluting it. our conversation. They know it's re like really exactly. important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I started like to, to, to be able to do like exactly what like a uh, hundred percent compatibility with Svelte. You need like some kind of JavaScript execution engine on the back end. Uh, Gojo would work. Um, I did some like profiling and it just like really kills performance. If you like have, um, if you're like, if you need this, like, Goja itself is not um, is single threaded, and like most uh, JavaScript VMs are, and so like you would need to like pass all, like all your like Go like Go's HTTP handlers like 
they're concurrent. And so like all of them are doing all these different things, but they all need to like kind of funnel through a, like a, like a, either a pooling system or something similar to like how a database works to be able to act to uh, render, uh, take that JavaScript that you'll, you got from the compiler and, and turn it into HTML. And so like that really, it was killing performance. Um, and so like go, like the go template, the native template system does something different where it's like, you can just, it's all, it can all be concurrent. Like they could all live in their handlers and, and render that way. So I wanted something like that. Um, and so what it does now is it, um, it basically does the same thing that the, the templating system in, in Go does. Like it'll take, it parses a spelt template, uh, turns that into like an AST nodes, and then it, it kind of walks those AST nodes and evaluate, like it takes the props or whatever and, and, and walks through the AST nodes and evaluates uh, a result and then produces that HTML from that. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I guess, um, so there, I, I think I'm, I'm following you for the most part. Um, there, um, so it doesn't evaluate, like it, is it not evaluating the value of like props ahead of time? Is that the case? It's only way to doing that on the client or I, I guess like how, how does it actually evaluate like a, a prop that is, is there on the server? Um, it's, it's like the same, um, yeah, so it does it on the server. Um, it's like the same kind of thing. If you look at like the go source for like go template or go like HTML template, like those, mm -hmm. those, um, uh, uh yeah, packages. It's kind of basically doing the exact same thing. I just like took inspiration from how they're doing it. So like, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's rendering on the server. Um, like it turns it into like a executable template basically, and mm -hmm. then like uh, and then like on the server uh, when you get your props, you pass them in, and it'll render that in HTML. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So it's evaluating these values in Go, not not in any kind of JavaScript yeah. environment. Okay. Actually, I do. I mean, I can share my screen. Maybe I can walk sure. if that's helpful at all. Yeah. Um, uh, wait, I think I just shared only this screen. Uh, that's not great. Okay. <laughs> uh, one second. Um, entire screen. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see here. This is Duo. Um, let me make it a bit bigger. Um, it's been a little bit since I've been in this code. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you've got this kind of a, like evaluator thing and that has a resolver in it, which is like able to kind of resolve, um, multiple, uh, spelt, um, includes or, or imports. Um, so like the, the basic gist is, uh, you parse a spelt file, um, you, you pass it into this, uh, evaluator and. Oh, this is inside the evaluator. Actually, this, so this would be like, this is like not the right way to do it, but like, y like you'd want to parse up front and then turn it into some kind of evaluator. And then like, this is like kind of the props that you pass in. Um, and then it evaluates the document. And so um, I'm like, let's see. Uh, okay, so I turn, I turn the props into like some kind of um, reflective thing, put it into into like the evaluator scope. And then like, you basically are just like kind of walking through, I've got the doc, I evaluate each of the fragments. Um, then if it's an element, you evaluate the element, you kind of walk down that thing and you're just kind of writing HTML as you go. Um, you, And then like the result is, yeah, just like a, the HTML result. Is that a little easier to uh, Pretty make cool. sense of? Looks really neat, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, like, uh, wait. Oh shoot! I think I'm making some mistakes here. Um, am I still sharing my screen? Oh. Uh, you no. are now. Okay. Looked like a second ago you might okay. not have been. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. So maybe I'll just like, I, uh, like, show kind of also where the project's at. So, um, oh, let me just. Yeah, I'm not seeing it right now. I'm just seeing, um, unless you're looking at like just oh, okay. a thing of Phil. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I, let's see. Okay. Oh, entire. Uh, yeah. Still getting used to this app. Um, yeah. Okay. Can you see that? Okay, cool. Uh, oh, um, yep. 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 Okay, cool. All right. So um, where things are at is you can kind of like, what is it? Uh, serve sample counter, maybe. 
yeah. So um, it would like let's see. So view source. <laughs> um, like if I curl this, um, like it rendered. Actually, I don't. I don't know. I don't remember exactly. Like it rendered this part at least, and I think I don't. I think I also attached the script just out of convenience um, for this. And so this is kind of like this is the part that I like. I think uh, Zui would like is a lot would would like it'd be great to like mix like merge these two things together because like I was just using Preact for this, um, but I think Web Components is definitely the way to go. Um, but yeah, so like it it rendered all of this. And oh, I think I also made it so like if I did um, count equals two, like uh, counter maybe. Uh, yeah, because right now when you load this page, it, it's just gonna, like it doesn't have a number. So um, mm -hmm. that that was being contributed <laughs> on the client side, not the, not the server side. But there's, there's some way to like get it, yeah, to like show the number I'm forgetting yeah. at this point. So, um, anyway. So so I guess Matt, like, and this, uh, sorry, I, I think I'm making you go over the same thing, but if you had a, like, just let's take a simple example. You have a prop called name, right? And, and name is just being put into like an H1. Um, that, so I would assume to, to get the value of name, you would have to evaluate JavaScript in some way, right? Or, or you it sounds like you don't have to. Um, yeah, no. So, um, like I, I, I can't do like crazy things like, um, call off a JavaScript function. Like I couldn't like, we, like this is like kind of the, the, the restrictions of not having a, an execution engine for JavaScript is like, I mean, I could like start building that, like yeah. kind of add things over time. And, and then you do end up with like a uh, bad JavaScript en execution engine. Yeah. But like all it is like in the same way that like Go templates, like you're able to kind of like, it's got like the name, like for example, and you've got like some pipe piping system and like mm -hmm. some and, like conditionals and things like that. Yeah. It's basically, implementing those but in a javascripty way so it's like kind of it like still looks like javascript it still supports ex like javascript expressions like okay. two plus two or something like that yeah um but it, it's 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 not like a full like it doesn't have yeah i can't call I, I wouldn't be able to call a javascript function or anything like that so like okay. that that's the that's the big constraint and i'm not sure and the other big thing is like it, in spelt you can have like um i don't know like export let name equals uh jim and then like uh within that same script block you could do like uh name equals jim plus phil and like then mm -hmm. then render it at the bottom yeah like it wouldn't be able to do those things because it okay. needs to actually execute and evaluate javascript but that's, i'm like just not sure if that's super necessary fair, like, fair enough okay that's that's the point where i was kind of like not understand because yeah because like the the script is like dual purpose right in in svelte right now right like you can like render it once on the server and you can also have it interactively render once it, the dom um loads okay so that makes sense um uh, but yeah. like that is that's kind of like a new like that's a new uh that's like a modern way of doing things like it, yeah. like like html before like you would just render it on the server like a, a full template yeah. and then like it would just be html and then it would like the event handlers and stuff would be added like yeah and so like this idea of um like rendering on the server and then also rendering on the client. Yeah. That's like, as kind of Phil said, that's like very like, what's the point? <laughs> like, yeah, no, um, I, I think we're all coming to the same conclusion because I know we talked about this on Twitter and yeah, like, so the way that my project works plenty is, is you know, we're, we're obviously, we take the whole thing, we everything's written in Svelte and we, we render all HTML through SSR and then we hydrate every aspect of it. And it's like, we're sending loads of JavaScript to the client that mostly is not interactive, right? So I think we're coming to the same conclusions. Like, I need like 90% HTML and then I need a, a few interactive islands of, uh, you know, support for like click, click events and things like that. So, um, I think we're all coming to, to similar conclusions and I'm sure there's a lot of different ways to come up about that. Um, but I know I want to be conscious of time here. So uh, I had another question here around, you know, uh, Svelte 4 compatibility. So it sounds like, you know, you're building basically this out with Svelte 4, um, you know, I, I think that's great in, in ways that, and also Phil's project was, I think targeting Svelte 4 as well, if correct me if I'm wrong, Phil. Um, I think that I'm has a lot sure. of advantages. Sorry. I'm not sure, actually. Um, I think I just went with the official version. I think 4 is upcoming, right? 
I think five is being released at some point yeah. soon. The rune stuff, like all that. Yeah. Bas- yeah. None of that like was, I mean, duo was built before that, before yeah. all this stuff came out. I think Zui was too. So like, yeah, that's why it, we're not up to date. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. so this is an interesting question about, you know, goals. So I think it's, it's cool that, um, kind of like the the templating aspect of it is is compatible because that means that we could use like language support for like IDEs and things like that. Um, but I'm wondering, you know, it, do you guys like what's your plan for Svelte 5 and beyond? Like is the idea to make these projects stay like at least the front end of it or like the, the developer aspect of it um, compatible with the Svelte project so you can continue to use those things or do you expect it to kind of diverge from that and become its own thing? Um, Phil, do you want to take this one? Well, I mean, my philosophy would have been probably not so much to capture the full feature landscape as it evolves over time, but rather taking the simple core um, that you saw that I basically that they had from the beginning, I guess, which is just simply uh, basically the stuff you love. I mean, the stuff that's really useful. I, I don't know what five versions do and what, what what new stuff they bring in. And I'm sure it's pretty neat, but uh, I guess I just had this sort of the simple, basic um, basic stuff. I uh, wanted, for example, if, uh, if I look at uh, Swelty Dogs, I see sort of motion and transition and animate and easing and action. And I probably wouldn't, for my uh, purposes, go all the way. Um, but it really depends. I mean, of course, then I, I made it for my purposes and not uh, as some sort of fully compliant uh, sweaty clone that can serve all sorts of purposes that other people have uh, and for sweaty. So, yeah, I'd probably keep it um, more minimalist and smaller than the official one if I were to continue with this or resume. Yeah. Matt, are you thinking along the same lines or what's your take on that? Um, yeah, I think like it, it kind of depends on, yeah, the goals. And I, I don't think I've like fully settled on goals. Like um, originally, yeah, it's kind of like, I, I, I would say like I'm coming at this project the same way Phil is coming at this project where it's like get the thing working. Uh, and like, I don't think I'd want to diverge too much. Like I, I, I actually duo does diverge a little bit. And I think that was like, like a bit of a mistake. Like there's things you can simplify in the spell language that I like actually ended up simplifying, but I'm like, uh, what is the point? Mm. Um, because like the thing is, if you diverge, you end up like kind of going away from like all the, like, yeah, the language ID, the syntax highlighting, there's just like a huge ecosystem mm. of things that you lose basically mm-hmm. if you diverge even a little bit. Yep. Um, and so then you're just like, I don't want to deal with all that stuff. So it's like almost is cheaper to like, just be compatible. I think you, you bring in a bigger group of people as well that are interested in this. If you're, if you stay compatible, I don't think you need to be a hundred percent compatible, but I don't think you want to be incomp- like I don't think you want to diverge, basically. Uh, yeah, in, I noticed in any that meaningful way. Yeah, because I mean, exactly. yeah, yeah, that was one of my um, motivations to have that developer experience in VS Code with uh, completion and and warnings and stuff. But if they warn about the stuff that's your own extensions, it gets annoying. So yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that um, makes sense. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead, Matt. I mean, if I were to take pick up this project again, like, uh, and a lot of that comes down to like motivation and like oh, what other people are doing. Um, but like, it, it, um, it, like, I would want, like, I, the Svelte Five stuff is, I think, mostly client side, and so like, uh, it basically added signals, um, similar to, like crack signals to Svelte. Um, I think there's a bit of other stuff they were doing, but like that was the main thing that this concept of runes, aka signals. Um, and so, yeah, like, I think it would mostly, it, it, I think it almost all lives in the, the, that JavaScript block, like all the changes. And so, um, from a backend perspective or like a HTML perspective, I don't think anything's going to change, uh, but, or like very little, but like the client side probably is changing quite a bit. Yep. 
No, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I I was thinking, yeah, the same thing. So I was I was playing around with I think I shared my repo with you, Matt. Just like ideas. It wasn't I wasn't trying to build a project. I was just seeing what's possible. And I was diverging yeah. in all sorts of ways from like, you know, if statements are I got rid of like the 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 hash and like the colon and that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, me too. But, yeah, exactly. But, but then but then you you're right. It's like those little divergences, then you can't use the language tools and your IDE support and syntax highlighting. And it's like yeah. It does make sense to to make it as compatible as possible, even if it's not fully featured. Like maybe you can't do transitions, right? But you at least your your syntax highlighting works. So um, that makes sense. Yeah. It seems like everyone's on the same page there. Um, I so one thing that uh, we had talked about is um, so uh, Matt, I think you mentioned that you know you have like a the kind of a fully thought out uh, Swap Four parser, and and Phil, I believe Zui's kind of doing like a regex. Um, scheme there. And I think that was something that you'd mentioned on our last call that you, you know, weren't super well, happy that's... with. And if you want to fully fledge it out, it'd be, you'd use like a, a, an official parser. Like, I don't know if you guys have thoughts on like, what it would look like to merge those two things? Like, what would it look like to use Duo's parser to kind of prep some of the stuff that Zui's doing for the, the front end targets? Um, do, do either of you have any sense of what that would look like or how complex that would be? I, I could maybe jump in uh, here because uh, I, I do have an idea. Um... So I'll share my screen again. Um, okay, so there's like two aspects, like there's the SSR side and the, and the client side. Um, like, so the, 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 yeah, ba like maybe I'll just share, like the, the, there's this, we have this full parser here and it's so like, and it's got Alexa and things like that. And like, it's pretty, I mean, this out of all parts of the project, this is like probably the most fleshed out is like, yeah like the, the, all this stuff, like there's actual tests and everything. So, um, and I think it, I think I also, you took all the spelt examples, if I remember correctly from like the spelt website and like, um, yeah. And, and like, those are all parsing. So it's not a hundred percent, but it's like, it's like in terms of where the project's at, like this is definitely the most mature. Um, so this is the, like, I want to rename this the SSR. This is the SSR thing. And this is the Dom thing. And so it basically takes the same AST document and uh, this one rendered it to HTML. This one renders it to JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And I think we're using, Phil, I think we're using the same library here. We're using um, uh, the TDE Wolf's parse library. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, all this is doing is like transforming the document into uh, JavaScript statements and then rendering that back like into JavaScript. And so I th like this would what I would want to do, because I, I think, Phil, your project is farther along is like basically just completely replace this file with your thing. <laughs> mm. That would be how I would approach it. Gotcha. Uh, I totally don't remember. Somehow, because somehow I get all this, um, this custom scripting, like if you have a component, a sweaty component, and you have a, a script log, somehow I get it in the in the compiled uh, JS, but I don't remember doing much JS parsing, really. So I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just grabbing all the top-level declarations and sort of pasting them right back in with some tweaking or something. So I don't know how much parsing you do, but I did very little uh, JS parsing. Uh, if you want, we can take a look quickly because it's been a while. Uh, that might just inform us a little better. Yep. Sure. Uh, if it's the screen share. All right. See what's the big picture flow. I have this two JS basically, and it basically takes on this sweaty file, right? And doing some HTML management. Initial basic, mostly static JS emissions. Hmm. So that does look mostly just like string oh, yeah. concatenation. Yeah, well, um, I'm using this uh, sort of uh, as an underlying but, 
Buff you you do have JSI statement in here, like, and so I, I think you are parsing it somewhere. Let's check it out. Oh yeah. So basically, I'm oh, yeah, I'm I'm sort of gathering the top level statements because you want this not as a you don't want it appended to the DOM. You want it right in your script file that you generate, right? Yeah. And. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, so I think what it, what it looks like you're doing is you've parsed the, the JavaScript, at least the top part, mm -hmm. and then you're kind of walking through that AST and like writing out, printing out JS, which, uh, to yeah, that like totally works. I, I the, the difference that I was doing was like, I would, I, I took the Svelte AST, which actually included within it, like it's got the script module, it included the JS AST within it, and like, turned mm. that into a JS AST, if that makes sense. Like, and then you just use the, the renderer to do that. But mm. I, but this is, this totally works too. Like both would work. You just, you, you're skipping the intermediate structure. Yeah. It's, it's, I already, like I said last time, it's pretty kind of hacky. I mean, I was just sort of exploratory really. So there's some, some messy edges here for sure. You had worked with um, web components before that quite a bit right not really but i just figured um it's really the way to go i mean i wanted them even before they existed in a way mm. i think everyone did <laughs> and um yeah unless you're doing server-side rendering where it's easier to do componentization i guess but uh, yeah on the client side so i mean i just sort of looked up before doing bringing in big dependencies like maybe uh, like lit dev or some other framework for web components i wanted to check what's the underlying essence right and in, in terms of yeah. web api and it's really fairly uh, comprehensive i mean comprehensible i mean easy to understand and to generate so that's uh, that's what i settled on really and matt we talked about lit as well like so so you Phil, you looked at it. Is, is Lit something that would be brought into this project, or is it not needed in this case? So, I mean, from where I was coming from, I would rather wanted to avoid it. I think mm -hmm. because uh, you have the Swelty, you have all this reactivity paradigm, and I think they have their own more or less, mm -hmm. and it might just not uh, gel so well. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my is... my feeling too. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, because this is also some sort of basically targeting a similar space, I think, or like uh, maybe not a competitor because it doesn't compile. Does it compile? No. No, it's just. Uh, I, it does, I, like the, the, this example, I looked at it uh, a day or two ago, so I like kind of have some context. Like huh? you, you would you would need to like this example doesn't just work straight up in the browser. Um, mm -hmm. it's, like the um, yeah, yeah. the at things that whatever they're called um oh, yeah, need that's to be this, compiled. this react style yeah. stuff right mm -hmm. except uh, they don't call it jsx they have these uh template strings yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, so this is why i like sweaty more because this is not how i wanted my markup to end up in mm -hmm. these uh, js returns or render functions so yeah um i don't see this uh no, or playing so well and when you are actually decided on the sweaty design like in terms of uh, how these component files look like mm -hmm. doesn't bring much to the table really i think yeah and phil you weren't actually trying to make your output look like svelte's output you were just trying to make the it functionally work right so you're taking the syntax and then making sure that it did the thing so like when you click the button it increments right that's basically mm -hmm. your approach yeah um, nice um that's why they kind of look in the generated code where well, it's just really um always the same this used to work so well in vs code uh, you open a file and then you press control open and it used to start right in the folder but no more hmm. uh, okay so i showed this last time already it's pretty uh, simple stuff really um we have this swelty file Oh, it's the one with the <laughs> with the audio import. Mm -hmm. That's a nice idea, actually. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, kind of cool. So, um, yeah, so what's awesome. the question? <laughs> Oh no! I just—I mean, I guess that—that that, that makes sense. And and Matt, I think that's the approach that you kind of agree with too. It's like not—we're not trying to be overly specific about making it 100% felt compatible. As long as it works and functionally can use like the templating side of it, then that's that's enough, right? So, uh -huh. um, it seems like that's the right approach. <clears throat> um, I did have a question about like um, like non-standard stuff. So I, I don't know if you guys have you know ever tried to like produce XML or something like that with Svelte. Obviously, that doesn't really work very well. Um, because it's felt wants it to be like standard HTML elements. Right. Um, do, do you picture this like Matt with your, your projects is doing SSR, like could it do non, non element handling, like something like a doc type or like an XML, um, like if you're producing like a sitemap or something like that, like that, that's super hard to do with. Oh, Svelte. gotcha. Um, I don't like. I would probably it gets back to like that. I wouldn't want to maybe diverge from what Svelte uh, does, but like I can imagine. So uh, sitemaps uh, would be interesting. Um, you could definitely do it. Like you would just need to kind of like extend the uh, compiler, the parser, in a way that would allow you to kind of understand some of those things. Mm. I think I don't think there's much because like. XML, I think, is a superset or a subset of HTML, yeah. whatever. Like, and so I don't think there's too much to, to change there. But like, um, it'd be interesting because I mean, SV, uh, SVGs are also XML, right? And so like, yeah, yeah. You, you just feel like kind of plop them in uh, your Svelte file and it have it just work. Um, I probably wouldn't prioritize that just because I think um, like there's enough online tools that like you can pop in a SVG file and like get out a um, a, a stealth component or something. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, if you, if you just uh, ensure that your markup is sort of uh, well found in terms of XML, which means uh, self closing text and every attribute must be quoted, right? That's a big difference from HTML, uh, the two big differences. Then you're basically already there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. XML, you know, mm -hmm. if the BR or the HR is uh, self-closed with the slash and the attributes are all fully quoted, then you have XML, really. That's good. You need a doc type, of course, but otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. Phil, um, do all these examples actually, do these work? Yeah, last time I forgot how I used to run them, but I remembered afterwards, so... Um, so if we go to, we can open any one of them. The last one was a little shaky, but uh, that's the last before last. We can do that. And so basically, let's find the place or not the idea. There we go. <laughs> I have this uh, developer browser where I disable some security stuff so I can run locally. And then, oh, and then you edit the index HTML. I should have a nice test suit like you, but I never got that far, really. Um, I think you got a lot farther on the client side stuff, though. And so, like, that's why I think it would be cool to merge these projects. Yeah, I was like, so. Phil, I think for, from our discussion, you were basically going through like the learn.svelte.dev examples. And yeah. it looks like you did 28 of the examples in the basic. And I think there's there's 12 more edge cases in basic. And then I also saw that there was, and then there's like an advanced section, which had 44 examples. So, I mean, like through the, the core functionality, you made it the majority of the way through that, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, I think, uh, let me just quickly check. Where's my other brother? Too many browsers here. Um, Swelty Def. I'm kind of curious what, what's missing actually. I know that I ended with it when they did the select binding, that's where I dropped out. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, that was before oh, the bindings, yeah, that mm -hmm. one, yeah, because they sense. actually have to be, uh, yeah, they, they have some special casing for convenience for developer experience and it makes sense but uh 
I was sort of fading out of the whole topic. Mm -hmm. So what's missing would be everything after, really. Yep. Uh, text inputs, I'm not sure they might work. Probably not. Like, if you want to. This seems like the way to go, though. It's like, go, yeah, kind of get through these examples and make everything work um, so one by one. And then, yeah, yeah, maybe skip the bindings because they're, yeah. Um, I was wondering. Work, huh? Isn't that odd? Shouldn't this work? Or shouldn't this be live or something? You might need to hit solve button because yeah. I think it's like an interactive thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's odd. Um, I was wondering if you all have any um, ideas on how to, how like, so one of the hard parts of about this uh, spell thing is like, at like um, rendering HTML and then hydrating that with the client. And I'm wondering if, if like you all have any ideas on how to do that. <laughs> uh, like, because you can't, um, I, like the, the way Java, uh, React works is like, it, it gives you like, like you render this big blob of JSON or whatever, and then on the client it picks it up and then re-renders it. Um, I don't think that would work with web components if I'm understanding right, because it's not really a, diff, a diffing thing. Um, do you have any idea how you would take state from the server and stick it on the client, basically, and go from there. And yes. mm. Do you want to take state from the server without, uh, I mean, sounds like an API call or something? I don't know. I'm not sure I get it, the problem. That's so, so like with SSR, um, like the server side rendering uh, mm -hmm. for let's say like Next.js or whatever, like what they do, uh, actually, I don't know, like the, what, the way old Next.js worked was like, uh, you would uh, go to a page, it would generate a whole bunch of HTML, it generated like a script tag that contained all the state that was rendered, like the props that were rendered on the server. Mm -hmm. And then a client would come in and say like, get look up that script, parse that JSON, re-render wow. the page and hydrate it uh, with the, that state. And so all the components now have all that state that all that state in their client, their tree uh, on the client side um, that works with like react and the, and spelt like when they do the, the diffing stuff um, mm -hmm. and like the hydration stuff, but I don't know how that would work in web, the web component world. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious if you, you all have any ideas on how that might work. Not Phil, you, you definitely know web components better than I do, so I'll let you. <clears throat> I mean, uh, they're basically they're basically script files, right? So, um, however you would do it in JS, I mean, uh, I probably need some uh, <laughs> some coding. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like a weird. I mean, I'm not used to this uh, sort of uh, paradigm because I never really, I always avoided React and and stuff like that, and so hydration and stuff. That's uh, kind of too newfangled for me. <laughs> Last time I did server side rendering was ASP, and yeah, so, um, yeah, and I didn't have these sort of uh, aspirations. So it sounds really interesting, but not no clue really how to tackle this. And Matt, I don't know if this is exactly related, but yeah, I've, I've been like conceptually, I've been thinking about this as well. So like. Um, I was roughly working on just some concepts around a templating language, right? And what I was doing was I was kind of taking, um, without actually looking at the code of Astro, I was taking like the approach of basically breaking out um, <clears throat> the server side like props in this like in fences. So basically like, you know, three minus signs. And then I had scripts that, that basically just get sent to the browser and then you load it and you do DOM manipulation, like, you know, do a query selector and change things, right? So um, that worked really well for server side rendering. I could, you know, pass, pass props down, they all get evaluated, but like, how do you say you're loading, um, uh, a user from like an SDK over an API, right? It's like, well, how do you like pass it to the right places? And I, I'm not sure the exact way that you'd want to do that. I don't know if it all becomes like everything becomes a store, um, and you just share things globally like that or, or what you do, because it's felt when everything's a component, like the way that plenty works today is every aspect of it is a, a client side render component, right? So when it hydrates, it's getting all this client side information that can interact with each other. Right. But if you're, if you're doing it in those islands, um, I'm not sure what that looks like at that point. Right. Because there's certain, it's like not, I don't know. I, I guess it's just like, it, it hurts my brain of how you would actually pass that tree down and, and back up and forth, but maybe that's not exactly what you're asking. Um, yeah, I think 
so the island stuff is is interesting because yeah, that is like a kind of a reaction to not doing a full uh, tree rehydration. It's yeah. just like hydrate this, hydrate that, hydrate this. Exactly. Yeah. I think that is exact. Like I think that is what has to be done with web components because I don't think that there is a way to just like like. My understanding of web components is you like you you define them at the bottom of your page and you've got like the HTML markup here, 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 and like I guess there is maybe a connect thing you could do, like and then you maybe go to a store or something to like hydrate it. Like there's probably some things you can do there, but it's it's I, I think the, the cleanest way, like the the ideal way would be like your your custom components like get the right uh, props or something passed in and they just like are like so it actually your HTML actually looks like it is mm -hmm. and then like somehow that's able to connect to the JavaScript in some way once like the generated JavaScript in some way and where it's able to like match up those I think that that works for maybe simple things it's like hard to imagine that working for like when you have like four loops and things like that and like you've got you're passing in arrays as props and things and it's just like uh, how do how do I do that in, in yeah. web component world um, but that's like the big like to to me if that can like if there's some solution to that then like i think the rest of it feels not too hard like the about like the evaluator stuff that we were talking about earlier that sounds complicated and it was like kind of racking my brain in the beginning but i was just like oh, like once i started doing it i was like oh this is not hard at all this is just like generating uh, like writing html as you go down walk down a tree mm -hmm. um and so and it seems like Phil, like the client side stuff that you were doing, didn't like as you got into it, like it didn't feel very hard to like generate those that that custom web component thing. And so I don't think any of these things are hard. Mm. Um, so yeah, but the the, the hydration aspect because the reason I want SSR is because it really is like makes a more like uh, general purpose uh, tool, like because uh, you can do like e-commerce websites and things like that with SSR um, and SEO friendly websites. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, like, I feel like that's a table stakes. Um, so, like, I, uh -huh. any solution that I would want to like to work, it would want I would want to work, have it work with SSR, basically. Yeah, yeah, but that kind of, I kind of determine that's the way I'm approaching it too. Is like SSR first, and then figure out interactivity. That's like you know, secondary. Um, <clears throat> speaking of SSR, Matt, I have a question, I guess, probably targeted towards you. Um, I don't know if you've come across, like, basically, Svelte doesn't have this concept of top level weights. So if you have, <clears throat> um, my, my project is basically, it's, I, I call it like a content driven approach. So basically, everything gets loaded from a dynamic component, and you can change the experience of how components load based on the content, which is just JSON, right? Um, and it allows editors to basically um, stay within a style guide, but build uh, different pages based on you know components that I've given them. Um, that's challenging with Svelte out of the box. I know Svelte Kit solves things like that, and I I solved it my own novel way. Um, uh, basically, we created these component signatures in V8, and then we we load the appropriate thing. So you can SSR dynamic components. So you have like a, a dynamic Svelte component. We tell what we want to load, and then we I, I go through and I, I load all those appropriately in V8. Mm -hmm. Have you? thought about this problem space at all with dynamic components being loaded SSR? Have you hit this roadblock or, or is this not something that you've even been thinking about? I don't think I've been thinking about it, but um, so just to back up a second, yeah. dynamic components, those are like the self, I, I forget the syntax, but it's like self component and then you pass in like this or something or something. Yeah, like that. exactly. So you do like Svelte colon component and then you, you, you pass like a component constructor to this and uh, yeah, okay. it loads it. yeah. Well, um, why doesn't that work on the server side? Like just kind of a, as is, like if you just try to render it? I think because it can't await the value of the component constructor, uh, I believe. So it, yeah, it has a challenge of like actually, so you get a, you can get a component constructor by like a static import, right? And then you could pass that, but it, it can't figure that out apparently server side unless you do some magic um, or... Um, I, I don't know. Svelte Kit solves it in a certain way. I solved it in my own way. Uh, basically, I, I go and I, I fetch that directly via a, a component signature is what I called it. But um, yeah, it's it's really like I had to really get in the system and kind of hack hack it together. Uh, it doesn't seem like there was a good way to solve that. And there's a couple issues on the Svelte um, project page that have been open for for many years, like people trying to do this thing. So I don't know. I could I could probably pass a link to it. I'll put in the. I'll put a link to that specific issue in the, the video when I publish this. 
Yeah, I'd be interested to yeah learn more. Um, I have yeah I, I haven't uh, encountered this yet, but it is surprising to me that like Svelte, like my understanding of Svelte is like the SSR and the client kind of go hand in hand, and like they're as mature as each other. And so like this sounds like a bug, but maybe it's like one of those really hard bugs because it's yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'm curious. Like, does the await thing make make it harder, or is it is it just around await, or is it around uh, like just any kind of dynamic component doesn't work with in SSR right now? Uh, any kind of dynamic component. Um, so let me let me I'll, I'll put it in the chat of this real quick, um, and okay. I'll also put it in the chat of the video. But I just yeah, I chatted to you guys in case you want to look at it um, at some point. But yeah. Um, you can tell it's been, like this was posted initially in 2020. Um, yeah, has has a lot of attention on it. But yeah, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, at least at least how I understand it, without um, doing something like Svelte doesn't natively, without like a framework or or doing it yourself, it doesn't natively support like a dynamic component um, being loaded in SSR. That's my understanding. Interesting. If I'm wrong okay. about that, let me know. Like, yeah, please let me know because maybe maybe there's an easier way to do it than I'm I'm doing it currently. Um, I'll have a look. Um, I, I'm I'm guessing you're right. Uh, that it sounds, yeah, kind of complicated. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea though. Yeah. Um, it, and for a lot of people, that's probably like a feature they don't care about. But for me, it's like the central part of our framework. Yeah. So it's like it's yeah, it's important. Um, but I mean, for for now, I figured out a way around it, and you know, it's working for our, our sites. But again, that's one of those things. I'm like, oh, this, I wish this worked a little better for our purposes. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I know we're kind of we're at the, a little beyond what we initially scheduled here. So I think we can probably um, think about closing this up. I want to let you guys ask any other you know questions you have at um, at the end here. But I guess my whole thing is like, what what does this roadmap look like? I know you guys both have competing interests and in, and in, in limits on time and, th and these type of things. So I don't know like what if we want to end here with what motivations would be to to continue working on this. What you you envision that like would this be a merger or would you possibly just sharing ideas and, and grabbing ideas from each other's projects and, and, and kind of like mixing them. And then if there was some kind of merger, like wh where would that live? Would we create a, a separate repo from, for it? And, and what kind of, you know, what kind of support would we want around that? I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I mean, I, I'm excited about the prospect of this. I would love there to be like a native solution that has some kind of reactive front end for, for go. I think that'd be hugely helpful. Um, and I would want to help in any way that I could, but I, I, I mean, obviously you need some driving force behind it. And it's, uh, it's a lot for individuals who have, you know, jobs and things that they, they need to focus on besides, you know, building these things. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, like what, what your motivation or what would, what would be the impetus to, to continue working on this and what would you want that to look like? Uh, yeah, I can, I can go. Um, yeah. So, uh, it really, yeah, it, it comes down to just like, um, uh, momentum basically yeah. and to, so um for me like I'm, I'm still interested in this space uh i it is a large uh chunk of work um and uh, yeah on top of like the normal job i also like have uh li like little side hustle things going so it's like it's it's hard it's kind of hard to justify um these things especially um because like next js is okay like it's not great but it's okay mm -hmm. um and so um but like if there was momentum i would jump on board basically and so like i, I feel like we just need to get like the rocket moving and like i don't care about like we can throw away whatever code or we can keep whatever code like I, to me that doesn't matter um uh very much i have an idea on how we could like join these things together and i think that would probably make the most sense as opposed to like just like taking ideas and like running with them but but again i'm actually okay with if somebody really takes the idea and just like wants to go with it like super energized by it like that's great too like it doesn't matter like i'm kind of with you like i don't really care how it gets done but i just want it to exist in the world Same. yeah <laughs> um and so uh and i'm willing to help like i'm willing to help uh, yeah up to some limit obviously but like i would i would love to like contribute in some way um uh just we just need a little bit of momentum i think and can you define momentum is that like um attention on the project via stars is it funding is it other contributors like what what is momentum sorry no it's 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 none of those things it's not uh it, it's just basically like some like we kind of like have a kind of i, I would say like have a have a 
roadmap sounds intense, but just like, yeah. like what are the things that are missing and that we want to get done to like get to like the 1.0 basically. Yeah. And like, there needs to be people working on those things. Yeah. And so th that's, that's to me momentum. Uh, and like, and that is enough. I think like if we just like are able to assign each other and be like, Hey, can you get this done? Hey, can I get this done? Like basically just like a normal job. Yep. Uh, and like, even though it's like much more, it had to be much more chill because like inflexible uh, yeah. because we're not getting paid or anything. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, um, but yeah, like that, that would be the kind of momentum I, I, I would say uh, that would be enough. Like, and then the stars, whatever the, that stuff uh, follows the project being uh, like useful to people. So. so, so basically to some, like some general assurance that this could be completed, like in some sort of way that's useful that like making like, yeah, so some definition around getting something useful done. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I don't think like it has to. I don't. I'm not like. I'm not saying like. Uh, um, like I expect anybody else to work on this. It's more like if you are working on this, like I will jump in basically, and like there's a chance that I will get super interested, and I will, and then like maybe you'll jump in or something like like I don't know, but like um, I've my historical past it shows that I have like I've kind of let this project linger and not I haven't worked on it in a while sure. that may change um but like I, if somebody else jumps in and like kind of gets the fire going I will definitely jump back in basically is what I'm saying cool yeah. that's great and, and Phil I know we talk and I'm not trying to put pressure on you I know you have something else that you're kind of taking the forefront of your effort like do, do you have thoughts on like is this something you that in any world you would want to pick back up or is it kind of like something that you're not interested in and, and what would that look like for you i guess if, if there was interest at some point yeah i mean i'm really sort of basically uh i'm back on the language track uh, as in another stack uh, mm -hmm. or language stack to use for web stuff for back-end stuff for development in general and so um i think this is just simply a an artifact that was written in Go and is out there so people can sort of steal from it, <laughs> uh, cut and paste and, and adapt it further or just simply see how how it generates the web component JS. And also my interest was always quite limited toward just JS, just the DOM and basically nothing with SEO or, or server-side rendering, right? So um, even even so, um, even regard, uh, disregarding the, the whole Go question, I was kind of um, very single track on this whole topic, just for GUI, basically. And uh, how do you say? In, as Americans, do you say GUI or, or, or what yeah, do you say? I say GUI. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, basically I, I don't see me getting really, uh, sort of highly active in this whole space anytime soon, other than what I put out there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for some reason, if anyone has any questions on the code or something, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not actually <laughs> nowhere near as, uh, uh, engaged in the topic at this current point in time, probably in the next couple of quarters. So, yeah. Yeah, that's totally fair. And I, I appreciate you, like, even though it's not your focus, you've had a couple conversations with me, you know, taking time on your weekend to talk with us. And oh, that's yeah, fine. That's, that's fine. I appreciate that so much. That's, that's really nice of you to yeah. do that. Um, all right. Yeah. Any, any closing thoughts, guys? Anything else? I actually still have a question, I guess. Um, uh, this is, uh, well, actually, I, I, I want to ask, I, I don't know if this was covered in the last video. I'll, I'll check out the last video uh, if it was, but like, um, what motivated you, Phil, to like jump into a different language space? Um, the thing is, <laughs> the, the main, I mean, Go has much going for it, right? But I just don't like curly languages. Um, and I also like Lisps. It's just a syntax thing, and so it's, uh, it's all these. Um, I don't know. It's uh, it feels so clunky. All these, uh, let's say. I don't know. It's just. Uh, 
limitations. I mean, Go has fewer limitations than what I was coming from back uh, 12 years ago or something, or 13 years ago when I was coming from C Sharp. It was a, a simplification and a um, much needed improvement, but um, I'm still sort of looking to get out of this because somehow it doesn't gel so well with my thinking. I'm always sort of really translating from from all this, uh, I don't know, operator soup. You can, you can call it, I guess, on um, separator soup and uh, back into what's the actual intent. And uh, yeah, just uh, the main selling point for me at this stage, I mean, there's many selling points for Go really uh, from, from the Go routines to the ecosystem, to the build times, especially. That's where it shines compared to Lisps. And uh, of course, you a chance in, in terms of native native code performance when you compare it to Python, right? So that might be more my thing in terms of syntax, but uh, that's a no-go really if you wanna sort of do SAS or anything sort of, it's just uh, wasteful, I think, to have this interpreted all the time. And so, yeah, I'm still sort of looking around and exploring and uh, deciding and yeah gotcha cool and you you're, you're uh, and then, oh sorry go ahead no, no no i was gonna ask an unrelated question go ahead Jim. Well, i was just wondering so, and phil the ultimate goal there is um still you still want to build a framework because you just you're thinking that maybe you want to build in a different way is that is that still true so i mean once i'm settled on something i would probably rewrite my own um, backend stack which would be basically designed to be able for for me to uh, sort of formulate different app ideas, server side app ideas, uh, let's just say SAS, if they find users or anything, um, and, and bring in everything that's sort of common among all of them, all the underlying technological requirements from the database to API uh, surface and also offering APIs, right? Um, that's a lot that um, that's not actually related to the core business, no matter what that might be, right? So yeah, yeah you want your own kind of underlying frameworkish sort of power stack, I guess, underneath. And uh, yeah, I mean, I basically did that in Go, and it's really pretty solid. Also, a jobs engine and stuff like that, maybe for certain schedulings and stuff. So and it's minimalist workflow things as much as needed, maybe. And um, so, and, and the front end, that would be the sweaty thing. So I would probably go ahead and rewrite all that because uh, anyway, it's fun to write and I've done it before. And the next time you do it, it's faster and and uh, and better. <laughs> yeah. So that'd be worth it, I guess, for me. It was like, um, sorry, I started yeah, up again. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. One of the issues I've had with Svelte is like, the backup multi-component within a file support. I'm wondering if, if you all have thought about this problem at all um, or cared about this problem, um, because that is one thing that like, in terms of extensions, I could maybe see it being worth it. Cause like breaking everything, like even the smallest buttons up into separate files is kind of annoying after a little bit. And so I'm just kind of curious if you guys thought about that. So Wait, what, what did you want to? Uh... So spelt components like uh, you can only have one component per file, basically. Uh -huh. Yep. And so I'm what like versus React, where you can kind of have multiple functions, and they each like have little um, templates that they can return, and so you can kind of take one big file like uh, and have multiple components, basically. And I'm just kind of curious if I think I find this to be a very limiting factor of Svelte uh, mm -hmm. as a whole, um, and I'm just kind of curious if you all have thought about that at all. So it wasn't on my radar, that's for sure, because, uh, but it might have been in practice once I had, if I had done some real world stuff with it. But uh, so far, I mean, uh, I was quite fine with this small files uh, approach and sort of working out your components and your folders. But also, I got to admit, I was uh, planning to go for some, uh, in terms of design uh, and CSS and stuff for some um, existing basically what you call a design system slash component system, right? So there's 
that's kind of neater for me than uh, old school GUI libraries because um, I don't know, they're really well engineered. I mean, Microsoft has one, IBM has one, and there's a one by uh, the GIS company, what's it called, Arc, Arc, GIS. And they're really cool. They're full of these UI affordances. And so basically for me, it wouldn't have been reinventing the button and reinventing the tab and everything. Ah, oh, just got to run to my phone. It's ringing. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Matt, I, uh, I mean, I've, I've definitely, we, we've built a couple kind of like felt applications at this point. Um, and yeah, I, I've definitely, we've run into place where it's like, oh, it'd be nice to let this little component. Does it, does it warrant having its own kind of single file component? And there's been times where I've, I've come across that. Um, it ha for me, it just hasn't been a, a huge need. Um, but I definitely yeah. have come across several times where it's like, this would be nice to just be able to like embed this into this other thing. But, um, yeah, is this something that you're running into like a fair amount? Is it, is that like a large requirement? I, like, I, I think the way maybe I work uh, on front ends is typically like I'll just put everything in one, and maybe this is like just bad practice, but I'll like, add, like, like I'll put a whole landing page in one component basically, sure. and then yeah. kind of break it up as I go. And like, so that to me, it's like kind of a nice intermediate step of like I broke it into like uh, across one file, and then like I don't need to like tab around to all these different files. Yep. Um, but I, I think you're right. It's not a huge deal. Um, I think Vue has a way of doing it. I just like wish Svelte would. And I'm like, I, it gets complicated because it's like, what is a script? If you have multiple components in one Svelte file, it's like, what does the script apply to? Do you have multiple scripts? I, I like the most obvious one would just be like, you have script, template, CSS, and then like script template CSS mate, like maybe that would work. It's just, I don't put, know. Put a couple um, minus signs or something I, to divide. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah because so, like your script's going to, uh, in your CSS is going to be scoped to all those components. Right. And that's, yeah, in your case, like, you don't yeah, want you that. You want all that stuff. Yeah. Out. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I don't know, like it would be nice. That, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of hoping they saw like spelled itself solves it to the yeah. point, but um, yeah, it, it, I don't know. It's, I think you're right. It's not a huge deal. It's just uh, kind of annoying. Yeah, I could certainly see that being something that they, I mean, so React kind of started that way, right? Was, wasn't was React single file components? Yeah. And then it's like, yeah. And they moved away from that with functional components or whatever they call it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure at some point, um, it does kind of seem weirdly that all the all the major three like React front end projects are almost looking more like each other every day. Like every new release, they, they kind of like come yeah. into the same lessons, which I guess makes sense. Like if there is a, a, a one best way to do these things, like you're going to, come across the same lessons and, and move towards it. So um, in some way, it actually, maybe that hints that there's some kind of truth out there as in what, what works um, on enterprise projects. But yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Hmm. All right. Anything else, guys? Not much. No, I don't think so. Okay. Let's uh, keep, keep chatting about the stuff. Is, um, yeah. I'm, yeah. Let's keep chatting about this stuff. I think it's really interesting. Yep. Great. Okay. Um, I'll stop the, the second recording. Um, I'll try to merge these two together um, with FFmpeg or something. And then, uh, yeah, I'll post this and send you guys a link. Sound good, man. Thank Sounds you. Good. Yeah. Good chatting.